there are some five suppliers, but it's a welcome surprise. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Brothers and sisters of Felicity, when I became President General of the Old Trinidad General Workers Trade Union, after serving as its legal advisor for a while, I told my executive that as far as I was concerned, the All Trinidad General Workers Trade Union still had a residual interest in the affairs of the ex-colony worker, that we had a moral and ethical responsibility to ensure that the provisions of the visa package were implemented as expeditiously as possible. Over the past few months, I think it would have been about 10 months, almost a year actually, I would have had several meetings with officials from Kyrene Limited, 1975, with several members of parliament and ministers of government in a bid to truly find out what, what was happening with regard to this visa package more so the distribution of the residential plots on the two acre lands. And on many occasions I, I was informed that things were moving very smoothly and that there were many ex colony workers who were not interested in acquiring these lands anymore, that many of them were indicating to Kyrene Limited that they were unable to plan the lands. And I found it a bit illogical, a bit illogical, that those who would have labored in the plantation fields of this nation, in the lands of this nation for so many generations, will indicate a Caribbean limited that they were not interested in land. And so the union began its own investigation into this matter of the distribution of the two acre and residential plots. And what I found what I found revealed a tale of utter dismay and frustration of difficulties and suffering on the part of the ex colony workers. What I found was a massive fiasco, a deliberate, and if not a deliberate conspiracy on the part of several persons in authority to hold on to these lands for themselves if not a conspiracy, then I was almost sure it was a revelation of unparalleled incompetence in this country never before witnessed. That is with regard to the distribution of the lands. And I did not come here to give a speech today. When I was invited here today, because of the work the union was attempting to do with regard to settling this issue, I thought it would be an interactive session, and I thought it would be like a forum. And in order to enable that, there are several issues which you need to be made aware of, which you need to understand and comprehend. Because too often, your understanding is based on what you would have read in the newspapers, or what you would have heard on a platform or what your member of parliament may tell you for two minutes in a meeting. The time has come for ex colony workers to truly understand what is happening in this nation of ours and what is happening with regard to your two acre plots and residential lots. And I want to give you some information. I don't want to bore you. I'm going to attempt to simplify the information as much as possible. But I think you need to know because when people come to you and talk about the visa package and they talk about the distribution of these lands, you must know what they are talking about and you must be able to say you are talking absolute nonsense. With regard to the two acre plus, approximately 7,246 persons were supposed to receive these plots. Out of this, about 1,500 individuals of Kyrene Limited did not follow through on the process, on the procedure in order to acquire the plots. And these names were actually advertised in the newspapers in 2012. 
if we minus that that 1500 we are saying and as mr rakib muhammad would have said we had 5746 persons to receive leases up to today march 2013 almost more than 10 years after the shutdown of the sugar industry three years after the present government would have withdrawn the appeal by the Patrick Manning regime against the Dial Singh judgment of 2007, 1,339 leases have been given out to ex colony workers. There are actually 4,407 ex colony workers still to receive leases with regard to their two acre plots. That, that is a travesty. And that is something we should never have allowed. But more will be said on that at a different time. In addition to that, there are still 1,500 ex colony workers who still have to draw to be allocated plots. That is even a worse travesty that 10 years after the shutdown of colony, and the so-called implementation of the visa package, you have 1,500 ex priority workers who still have to draw to get the plot. And it's all smiles, as though everything is okay. In fact, lands have been identified, have been identified for these persons, not the 1,500, the 4,000 and something, and there are many persons who the lands have been identified no leases have been given. Kaoni Limited is saying that they give you a license that you could use. But they give you a license without any infrastructural development. They expect you to take a license to the bank to get funding. They give you a license without any security of tenure and expect you to plant your land. But we'll come to that in a while. I am also informed that they are actually 1,500 leases sitting on a desk at the Commissioner of State Lands Office. No one knows what's, hap what's happening with that. It has not been given out of yet. When I discuss this issue with Kyoni Limited, the Chairman, the CEO, members of Parliament, I was actually informed, and, and what I'm telling you here, I'm, I'm putting it in, in point form. Because like I said, it's not a speech. It's information that you need to know because you need to know what those whom you would have trusted with your interests, what they are doing to you behind your backs. You need to know. They were claiming that farmers were not interested in planting the lands, even though you had been given license. Yet, while they were claiming that, you had an abject lack of a lack of proper access roads, crossings, irrigation, drainage, bridges, a total lack of infrastructural development. But yet they are, are accusing you of not willing to plant your lands. And as Mr. Mohammed said, they, they claim that they would have spent a further six hundred million dollars in developing these lands. Up to July 2012, there were actually 887 persons who were allocated lands, but then they were dislocated from these lands. These lands were taken back from them for different issues of government. To date, these 887 persons are still to be reallocated lands that were taken back from them. This is the type of things that you are not hearing and you are not made privy to. And these are the type of things I'm going to reveal to you tonight because the time has come for you to know what is happening. Our information, our information indicates that up to 2010, 60 
57% of Kearney, Waterloo, Exchange, Edinburgh, and Felicity sections had inadequate drainage. I don't know what the government could tell us that they would have done since 2010 to address this issue. 88% up to 2010 of all sections falling under the Kearney two acre plots had an absence of irrigation. Up to 2010, 94% of all sections a lack of proper leveling, leveling and cleaning of the land. Up to 2010, 76% of the north and central sections had a low nutrition ability. Can the government tell us what they would have done to address these issues since 2010? I don't know. We will have to find out. Up to 2010, 20% of La Gloria, Cedar Hill, Pity Moon, and Picton sections had over 50% of topsoil loss. And they expect you to plan the land without assisting you. And I could go on and on on the difficulties that you are facing with regard to the two acre plots. In addition to being allocated, lots miles away from where you live and then being told that you can't build anything on the land except a 12, uh, what is it, a, a, a shack, about 12 feet. And in fact, the situation had become so ridiculous that, that there's an individual sitting in this room today who built the shack, went up so that the overseer is not an EMBD came and broke down his shack because they said he was building a house. That is what you have to face. No consideration for your equipment, your tools, lastly. No consideration for the fact that you may need to rest while you are on your lands, located sometimes 5, 10, 15, and 20 miles away from where you live. But we'll get to that at another time. I want to come to the residential lots. And I know Felicity has a serious difficulty with the residential lots with regard to those where the coconuts, I think it was, were allocated as residential lots and then and then it was turned into agricultural plots was it and i know we are trying to get back those into housing lots and if not housing lots then those lands should be allocated to the felicity farmers who live in the vicinity of those lots i know that is an issue We are also informed that 7,514 persons applied for residential lots. Out of this number, 1,155 1, leases have been given out after 10 years and after three years of this government in power. 6,114 persons still to receive leases for their residential lots. Out of this, 1,534 persons have been dislocated from their residential lots and they are still to be reallocated residential lots. In fact, information reached us and I actually saw documentation where there were persons who would have paid off for their residential lots many many years ago and is still to receive a lease or even shown where the plot is that is a travesty and that is a con game perpetuated by the former regime and but i'll deal with that at another time in the MC complex upstairs as i would have been dealing with it months gone by i'm also informed that there are actually two lawyers in port of spain because I, being an attorney, I know myself, you know, you, you hear things. That there are two lawyers in, in, in not Port of Spain, but South, who have been preparing leases and registering up to 100 leases per week. Yet they are not being given out. The question is why? There are persons who would have been, who would have paid down 4000 to $10,000 for their plots. And they are yet to get an appointment to see the land that they paid for. Worse yet, get a lease. There are persons 
who have received the locks and some who have even been given the leases, but there are no approvals for electricity or water or sewage system. We must be fools. They must really take us for fools, these members of parliament who drive in their black prados and take away food at the end of every function. They must think you are fools, that your duty is to bow to them and praise them. They are the ones who you would have been who have put there to serve your interests. And this, this is what I'm reading to you is the interests that they are serving. You, the ex charity workers of this country, you would, who would have toiled in the vineyards of this country, who never asked for political patronage or handout, but who were willing to plant a kitchen garden and put it out by, by the roadside and sell it to make a living. That is what they are doing to you. And the time has come when you must put a stop to that. And while that is happening, no approval for electricity or water or what have you, the place in Calcutta that they bought for how many millions, all approvals and there's actually a centralized sewage system being approved for that place. While, I won't go into further detail, while the ex colony residential lots, there are no approvals for a sewage system. I don't know what they expect you to do when you do get your lease or if you should build a house on the land. And I have a lot of information here. There are individuals, and Mr. Earl June, for example, who went on numerous occasions to pay for his residential lot. First he was allocated, then he was dislocated, relocated. And while he went on numerous occasions to pay for that lot, he's being told that no development is taking place, so they can't receive the money from him. That's an excellent question. What is really going on? But we'll come to that. <coughs> if Colony Limited 1975 or the government of Trinidad and Tobago through their subsequent line ministers believe that they could use the excuse that the farmers are not planting these lots, the, the two acre plots, and attempt to take these lands away from the farmers, then I assure you the old Trinidad will use every means necessary to put a stop to that. Because this old Trinidad is different to the ones that have gone before. This old Trinidad has a barrage of lawyers who are ready and willing to do what is necessary to protect the interests of the ex colony worker. And I come to the DL Singh judgment, and I want you to hear this. You must know what the court ordered for you. And you must know what the former regime was in breach of and what this government is so far in breach of. And when I say in breach of, I mean in breach of a court order. The DL Singh judgment, page 59, section 59, it states, it understands that such an exercise will take some time to be finalized. That is the distribution of the residential and two-acre plots. But it understands too that government has the power and the capacity to expedite the process if it so desires. That says a lot. If the government so desires, it has the capacity and the power to expedite your leases and your lots and your plots for you. I will leave that there. In addition, page 38, section 61 of the DL Singh judgment, on the facts and in all the circumstances of this case, I find that the promise to the former sugar workers has not been kept, and that their legitimate expectation has been and is being frustrated by a lack of reasonable, expeditious action on the part of government. This is an ideal thing, judgment, you know. Of 2007. This is 10 years after, with three years of the People's Partnership in government. The order that the Singh made. Let me tell you what the Singh said. 
about you, the ex colony workers. Justice Dial Singh said, one, two acre agricultural plot with all proper infrastructure, including access, drainage, and irrigation facilities to each plot must be given to the ex colony worker. Not building one pond to serve a hundred plots. Irrigation facilities to each plot. The I'll sing again. One lot residential lots with all proper infrastructure, including access, water, and electricity to each lot. But I will come to the fact that while you suffer and you have to beg and plead and hold meetings like this in your community centers to get some type of action, even after a court order, there are persons getting carry lands, you know, all over the place. But I will deal with that in a Renzi complex upstairs in the hall. Brothers and sisters, I, I, I never really, I never really understood and grasped what was happening. I never clearly understood the injustice and the disdain and the contempt with which you were being treated until I took a tour of Felicity. Uh, I was invited by Mr. Balbo been to tour the two acre residential plots, uh, the two acre plots in Felicity number one and number two. Phase one and two. Let me tell you something. It was one of the saddest and most revealing episodes in my life, and I will tell you why. What I saw, what I saw, it made me, I shuddered in disbelief. I felt a sense of shame and disgust. Shame for those your people who will treat you like that and in some instances deliberately as, as such you know deliberately i saw flooding i saw main drains clogged i saw a drain with sewage passing through parts of the land floodgates that needed clearing lack of road curtains inadequate water limited and no access to plots no irrigation systems and plots existed three to four miles away from where you lived. And the blame for this falls squarely on EMDD, Commissioner of State Land, and Colony Limited, 1975. And those who are responsible for ensuring that the state agencies do what they have to do. Lastly, loss of crops, no system of compensation. And the sad thing about it, I actually saw ex colony workers who were making every single effort, despite infrastructural support, to plan the land. To plan the land, in spite of the lack of drainage, lack of water. Men who were, who were using barrels and toting water to irrigate the land. And worse than that, I was utterly shocked while passing through one particular road. The road was about 12 feet across. On one side, you have the, the agricultural plots that are allocated to the ex-carony worker. And on the other side, you have private individuals who, who have large tracts of land in which they are planting. On the side with the ex carry worker, no, no access roads, no crossings, no bridges, no irrigation, land overgrown. I actually saw an ex carry worker with a hoe attempting to build a drain across two acres of land. That is a disgrace. A total disgrace. That our people and my people you, who I said would have labored for generations, that you have to go through that. It is a disgrace. 
And on the other side of the roadway, where the private all infrastructural development, perfect. Road paved, everything you want. And this is a road on one side and on the other side. That is what you, the ex colony workers, have to go through. And I know that the people in Felicity would have written to the, to the Minister of Food Production on the 9th of March 2012, where you asked for proper access to roads and bridges, proper irrigation for cultivation, retention ponds. I know you would have written to him on the 29th of March 2012 again, talking about the, the, the two acre plots and the lands and the coconuts that were moved from being housing lots so, to our cultural plots. I have the letters there and I will be dealing with that as, as time goes. I toured Felicity and from what I saw, I must ask you if it is any different since you wrote these letters in 2010, 2012, sorry, if there's any difference today, June 2013. And if there's no difference, then ladies and gentlemen, we have been failed by those who we have placed our trust in. It's as simple as that. No questions asked. We have been failed. From what I have seen, I know now that it is a blatant lie that most farmers don't want to plant. What is happening is that they are being hindered by neglect and a lack of support from what may seemingly be a conspiracy by Colony Limited and persons in government to deliberately frustrate you so that you would have no choice but to give up those lands or they will come to you to rent your land very cheaply. I'll come to that in a while. And what I can't believe, ladies and gentlemen, is that this party and this government that you would have supported your whole life. Since the 1950s, you would have been supporting this party in, its, in all its incarnations, fighting and struggling against the atrocities and the sins perpetuated and committed upon you by the PNM regime, subsequent PNM regime. And when the time came for your difficulties to be solved, you are still in a community center in Felicity, begging and pleading for that. Something wrong somewhere. And you know what? I don't want to believe that it's deliberate. In fact, you know what I'm going to say here today? I choose to believe that ministers of government, those line ministers, charge land, I choose to believe that they are deliberately being misled by their advisors. And those with their own agendas. Now I want you to listen to me carefully. I said I choose to believe that. I shudder to believe otherwise. You know, and the government must be aware by now. The government has to be aware by now. After the numerous meetings, after the numerous meetings that the old Trinidad have had with this government and those in authority, the line ministers, Carly Limited, EMBD, Commissioner of State Land, the government must be aware of the lack of drainage and lack of irrigation, lack of access roads, lack of bridges, lack of crossing. They must be aware that there are people who have paid for their lot over five years and still haven't gotten it early. And they must be aware of the difficulties and the problems that you are facing. They must be aware, because if they are not aware, then something is wrong. And while this is happening, ladies and gentlemen, there are private companies and private individuals in Trinidad and Tobago who are having access to Caribbean land. Some of these companies are not even involved in agriculture. But you, the ex-Karani worker, you can't get your wake up sort of yet. And then you have private individuals who were not Karani workers, who were allocated 10 acre, 5 acre, and 2 acre plots of Karani land. And you, the ex-Karani worker, who by a court order is supposed to get a 2 acre plot, you still can't get it up to now. Something is wrong somewhere. And we must ask ourselves, you know, because the time has come, because I am fed up, you know.
since June 2012, when I became the President General of the All Trinidad, I have been asking and begging and pleading and having meetings to try and solve this issue. And the time has come for us to talk. Because the government found the $300 million for the Columbia Orange Program, an unimportant program, it was necessary. But they found the $300 million for the, for the Columbia Orange Program. And they found $10 million to give to Ahsoka artists to produce a CD for Independence Day. And $10 million, $10 million. In fact, $90 million for Carnival. Millions spent by this government in public relations advertisements. $340 million allocated to Carony Limited. And I have to ask the question, where is the difficulty in finding the money to deal with the outstanding issues of the ex carony worker, of you and you and you? What is the difficulty? What should I say? Is it time coming when I have to, to, to talk about something called reverse discrimination? Not discrimination, mind you, but reverse discrimination? But those things I want to leave for in the complex. And I am therefore calling on ministers such as Rudolf Munilal and David Maraj and Rudranath Indel Singh, the former President General of the All Trinidad. I am calling upon them to take a personal tour of not only Philly City, but all the residential and Quaker sites in this country. I'm calling upon them to do that and not to take that talk with their advisors or officials from their ministries or from the state agencies. They must come to the community centers and meet with you and you must take them and show them the difficulties that you are facing. I tell you, I took a few hours and I toured the areas in this place, Felicity, that's phase one and two. It was one of the saddest days of my life. It is this in mind, brothers and sisters of the All Federal General Workers Trade Union, has decided that come with me and whatever the consequences, I am going to ensure that you are given. back the respect that you deserve as not only first class citizens of this nation but as those who would have fed this nation for generations. That is the mandate, that is the goal and the vision of the old Trinidad under my stewardship. And I want to tell you something, I need to reveal two things today. While meeting with ministers and officials in government to deal with these land issues. They asked the old Trinidad to submit a proposal to them in which the old Trinidad will assist them in settling these issues as expeditiously as possible. And I didn't see a difficulty with that. That was what the union was arguing for for the longest while. And so we submitted a proposal in which we indicated once our expenses are met, because when we spend resources, the resources must be given back, because I will be doing the job of Carony Limited, and I'll be doing the job of EMBD and of the Commission of State Land. And I want to, I, I won't be long again, but I want to read a part of that proposal for you. I think it's essential that you know the vision, this proposal from the All Trinidad General Workers Trade Union that was requested of us by those in authority in the government. The vision of vibrant agricultural sector with the ex-carony worker playing an integral part 
in food production and sustainability. The goal, the completion of the allocation and distribution of the residential and agricultural plots was mandated by the DL Singh Judgment and Court Order of 2007 of lands and leases to every single Caroni worker. The union will act as the medium between all parties and engage in the process. I have been asked to answer that of of the process of bringing to an end the disconnect between the ex colony workers and those whom you would have put in power. And of course, ensure that the lease and land distribution be expedited. And the union would also assist in this thing called the Caroni Green Initiative, assist in the logistical difficulties, because I want to come to that now. There was the issue of the Caroni Green Initiative. And I want you to you know that from a theoretical basis of food production, and once it is done voluntarily, the union does not have a difficulty with it. However, from a logistical aspect, from the practical implementation of the green initiative, the union is concerned about several things. One, what are the fees which will be paid to the ex carony worker at the end of the year? What are the yearly fees? Knowing fully well that huge profits could be made on these lands. Will the ex carony worker be involved in the profit sharing if they agree voluntarily to the Karani Green Initiative. And we have to ensure that you are not deliberately frustrated to give up your land to this initiative. Everything must be done to ensure that you have the whereabouts to plant your own land if you so wish. But I want to leave the Karani Green Initiative because from a legal perspective, I would want to deal with that at a later time and deal with that with the CEO of Karani Limited. I'm therefore calling tonight on the government through the relevant line ministers to make the land and lease distribution of immediate urgency and to address it and ensure that you, the ex Karani workers, do not face a colossal travesty of justice being perpetuated upon you. I do not want that at the end of the day, 20 years go by and you are still fighting and your generations are still fighting for what is legally due to you. Not a gift to you. I want you to understand that. It's not a gift to you. It is not a handout to you. This was part of your visa package that is legally due to you. It is your right. And in this light, I tonight want to call upon the government of Trinidad and Tobago to immediately revoke the appointment of the chairman of the board of Caroli Limited and to disband that board immediately. <laughs> Simply because there's no doubt in my mind that this chairman and that board has miserably and or deliberately failed in their duty to the ex carony workers and they have failed in their duty to the people of this country and they are in breach of the DL Singh judgment and a court order. The time has come to get rid of them, of those miscreants in office. Ten years after the shutdown of Karani Limited, I'm in a meeting and the chairman is talking about logistical difficulties in the implementation. Can you believe that? That's a disgrace. And when I leave here today, you must remember what I've said because they will come to you, you know. And they will talk about what they are going to do and who should have done or could have done. And they will weep for you and hold their hearts and plead with you. But you remember what I'm saying here today, and you remember the DL Singh Court judgment. I am pleading, I'm pleading with the government to do what is right and what is just for the ex-carony worker, 
I am asking the government not to forget those upon whom back, whose backs you would have stood and trampled, trampled upon to be propelled into power. I'm asking you not to forget those people. I'm asking you not to forget the ex colony workers and those persons who would have fought with you and pounded the streets with you and who would have supported you for generations. I'm asking you not to forget those persons who are the backbone of this government. Not to forget them. Because you see, they are still begging and pleading to get what is legally due to them. And this, and I've said it before, and this government, like any other government, must understand that any person, any people, no matter how docile, no matter how humble, no matter how passive, any people, if pushed too far, may very well react in ways not expected of them. That is a message and a lesson that the government must take to heart. I am assuring you tonight that the Alternative General Workers Trade Union will not abandon you. You will not stand alone. We will stand by you and we will fight with you to ensure, to ensure that the leases for the agricultural plots and the residential lots are expedited as fast as possible. I am saying that you, the people of Felicity, must tell the government that we are giving you three months to expedite this process. We want this done before the local elections. Because there are 4,000 leases in the hands of the, uh, the, the chief state solicitor. There are 1,500 leases in the Commissioner of State Lands. We want those leases, and we want them now. In this vein, ladies and gentlemen, in the month of July, the All Trinidad General Workers Trade Union will be holding a mass meeting of ex colony workers to be held at Renzi Complex to report to you on the progress that has been made with regard to the lease and land distribution for the two acre plots, the residential lots, the sweetener loan issue, and the Colony Green Initiative. Ladies and gentlemen, we will stand with you. I thank you. It's been a long time since the last meeting we are having a meeting today. The reason why for this is that we had many obstacles having meetings with ministers. And when we don't have anything to tell the people, we cannot have meetings. And I thank God really for this day that we could achieve this little so that we could gather here today and you could learn and educate yourselves a little more. I go to refresh the memories a little. I speak here first about the housing lot. There are 750 acres of land in the coconut, which 450 acres were earmarked for housing lot, and 300 acre, 320 acres was, I would say, waste at the time. But lo and behold, these lands, the housing lots, which were named by Carol Limited, is Philistine Phase 2. On the 25th of the third, that is 25th of March, 2010, the Agricultural Society went to the invaders' ground. They had a meeting, and they in told the people there to go and occupy the housing lot that the lease would be given to them. Before that, they were already started squatting on the 320 acres of land, which we didn't have a problem of. When I say which we didn't have a problem of, 
carnivores. Because we know that our housing plot is there and once the end go into that, we didn't have a program. But since it was said to them to occupy that land, since then our group started. Because before that we were members of the land of the Squatters Association, so to call it. And the type of thing they were doing was no interest or benefit for Kayani workers. Because everything they were doing, you only hear it is being done at Bernardo. That is how they call it, Bernardo. Since then, we pick up this fight. And I'm not here to uplift Mr. Warner, really. But he's the man who has helped our group at all times looking for meetings with the other ministers. We had a meeting with Mr. Vatan Barth, and we invited him to come and have a tour of the housing lot. He came, and Mr. Warner came on that day. That day was the 6th of October 2010. After that visitation, Mr. Barton Barr said that he was given an answer in a month's time. Well, Mr. Warner said he could give an answer in a week's time. But lo and behold, Mr. Warner didn't want to give an answer because that is not his portfolio really. That was Mr. Vatan's portfolio. A lot of times we try getting on to Mr. Vatan to know what is the latest taking place. But that one month just took the 9th of March 2012, that is last year that month up, from 2010, the 6th of October, to the 9th of March, 2012, when Minister Vatan Barat came right here to visit our agricultural land. If you could rem remember who was here, he said it in the open, that the people who squatting in the housing lot will have to be moved. Up to this date, they are still there. On the 8th of October, we went to see Mr. David Maas. Again, was problem getting an appointment to, to meet him. Again, Mr. Warner has to get that first. On that meeting, was two groups went to him. Our group, our farmers group, and the ex carney workers group. On that day, we asked him about if he know anything about the relocation that we asked Mr. Vatan Barat for, which Mr. Vatan Barat said, to send them a listing of all those who need this relocation. As we did, we gave him a copy, which he didn't have, and those boys saw him with his future plan loan investment. He said that he would look into it and let us know from that time, we are looking for a meeting with him, partly every day, every other two days, I called his office and his secretary would continue to tell, tell me that he is ready for an appointment as yet. 
As we were affiliated with the National Food Cup Farmers Association, they got a meeting. And when they got get in that meeting, we happened to be there. Myself and our secretary from our group, who is the treasurer of National Food Cup Farmers Association. In that meeting, we asked Mr. Devan Maraj about the relocation that we people wanted. He said in that meeting that we never said anything about that. So when we started to talk about it, the president of National Food Cup Farmers Association had just to tell him, yes, he'd get a copy and probably he misplaced it. Then he said, yes, I remember. On that day again, we asked him about the irrigation system supposed to be laid down with the act Mr. Batten by for. He said that he cannot say anything on that, but he would try to get some information on that and get back to us. Up to this date, we haven't seen him or heard from him. When we talk about the relocation of agricultural land, what we were asking for really is that people who you know get land in Silsi, far into the agricultural site in Silsi 1 and 2, if the housing lot becomes agricultural land, we would like them to fit in there. And if the housing lot remains as housing lot, phase 2, which there is a lot of land given out to the people from Esperanza, and they are not coming in Philistine to do any farming. On that visit with Mr. Vatan, sorry to mention it before, we also asked him that that land in Philistine phase two, as they don't have that amount of people there. If we county people could go and utilize these lands or get more lands to plant, if we could do so, he said yes. We also mentioned to him that before county send their people home, people who get who were sent home before 2003, if they also need land to plant, they could also get land across there. He said yes. But when Mr. David Maraj was asked about that. He said that the relocation, he has to see about that in the last, which was very funny. If he has to see our business in the last, when would be that last? When the next election coming up? When they lose election? So these are the sort of things that we were going through with these ministers. As my brother here mentioned about, we went to see Mr. Fatan Barat on the 9th of January. He called us back for a meeting on the 27th of March this year. Before that day, they called and said that meeting postponed. It postponed for the 5th of April. Before the 5th of April, they called back and said that meeting postponed. Up to this date, they haven't called back and give us a meeting. Well, the way I set up call, I stopped calling them, to be honest, because I spend any real money off of my pocket. So this is how we happen to go to Mr. Maraj, and he, with an open heart, received us, and he listened to our plea, and here we are today. But what we are really looking for, what belongs to our Karani people. I also want to thank the people for placarding in front of the Prime Minister because you really feel it. And I, and I, I am wishing that things could happen in a way 
that we, the Karni workers, could get what we deserve. I want to ask one question here tonight. We have started that protest. Would we get your help in the other protest? Because Mr. Munilal called my name, Balgobin in the open, and said that you'll get your land, your housing lot, but he didn't say housing lot, eh? he said housing to a couple of the way how they, the way how confused they get. So what I'm asking you all, we need your support. Now the housing lot that he's speaking about, which he said that he we will be getting in a month or two months time, with my name in it, that could never happen because he's fooling me. Because you know why? My land is in the coconut, where they have doing farming. They have gardening it. You think them could get them people out in a month or two months time? So we are being fooled at the very present hour. When would we stop being fooled? When? Let us not be fooled. Let us get up and look for what belongs to us. Let us not say, well, he going, man. I could remain. I could hear what went on. Or what he gets, I would get. Other people don't operate so. We have to get together and be united to look for what belongs to us. In the next meeting, which will be coming up, could we get some more placards up in here? Because I wouldn't like to know here, we say yes, and over there, we have nobody to look to. So I am asking and begging for your support because we are doing this for ourselves. We are doing this for everybody to inherit. I want to begin by telling you I shall be very brief. Because as far as I'm concerned, we have heard enough talk for the night. And therefore, I want to get from you where do we go from here. And before I do that, I want to tell you, first of all, that it is quite, quite glaring that the government of which I used to be a member and will be a member, believe me, the government only acts under pressure. That is all they act under respect. So you threaten to, to, to come down from last until the rush color me orange, $208 million. You promise to, of course, block the road with tire and so on and so on. The rush and the fifty road in Point Quarter, in the library and so on. And that's what happened. And because of the fact that by your very nature, you do time, you do complain, you're nice people, you do protest and so on. Nice people, that's the price to pay. That's the price to pay. And I made the point when I was Minister of Works and Transport for over 20 years. The people from Oropun didn't have their land matter settled. And I began to pay them their money in Oropun. I, was, I had paid about 50% of them their money because the money is in the bank, you know. And had been there for 20 years. And they hadn't been paid. And when I was both on transport and the airport came under me, I began to pay them. Whoops! The movement. <laughs> the movement. And nobody has been paid since. And nobody complaining. Nobody complaining over food. You see, since I go to school in short terms, the Shogunas Magistrate Court is the same court it is now. If Columbus were to come back here, he will see the same court. <laughs> nobody complaining. Everybody happy. And so, and you listen as long as you can. The hospital that is not being built in Coover was designed to be built in, in, in a Connector Road. 
all the designs, all the plans and so on. $420 million, a hospital for your water. And everything, just pick up just go to Cuba. And when I call to people, they start to complain, nobody complains. They moved the health center for your water and they put it in Montrose, upstairs in a building, so when you see, you have to go upstairs. Nobody complaining. Nobody complaining. The one exception, the one exception was Monroe Road. Because for over 50 years, the land in Monroe Road had not been given out. And I was able to pigeonhole, and you hear the starting on, on, the, on, the, on the net, Munilal, 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 Munilal. That's a fact. I was able to pigeonhole Munilal and Kunilal in meetings, in meetings to get them to give the people the land in Monroe Road, which they finally agreed to one week before I left the cabinet. We had meetings, a committee of seven, we had regular meetings. I brought Kunilal and so on and said, listen, you have to settle this. And why am I making this speech to you tonight? I'm going to love this course from yesterday, the Senate President. Lovely. The history, of course, is unparalleled, unsurpassed. And he has asked us to talk at the meeting, but that wouldn't give you the land. And I tell you this tonight, when I met them on the Monroe Road land, I told them, if you don't give the people and them these lands and settle this matter in this term, they'll never get it again in lifetime. You see, in lifetime. And I get, the, I get the impression that the government wants some of you to die. And when you die, of course, the battle is solved. But they don't understand that you won't die. Not now. And therefore, the point is, I'm saying, if you don't get this man settled within the next 18 months to, to, two, to two years, kiss him goodbye. Because the way we are going and the way we're behaving, I don't know where, what will happen next election. Everybody in this country is bitter and angry. Everybody, of course, feels, feels cheated and disappointed. You know this. Somewhere, and I keep making the point, there is a big disconnect between the government and the people. I made the point to them, don't have no Monday night forum and talk down to the people, go down to the community centers and talk with the people. But they are listening to me. And I tell you tonight, unless we decide to move and to act and to act quickly, you could kiss those hands goodbye because when, what if, where are we going? If the PM comes into power, where are we going? You could kiss it goodbye. Why is it? Why is it for three years this man hasn't been told? Look at this, meeting after meeting. Why is it it took Barack more than a year to answer a matter that he said it would take a month? Why is it? But nobody wants to make noise, nobody wants to say anything, no, and thanks, thanks to him and, 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 and you. The placard, of course, came up, came up at the last meeting. You have to have more like that. And you have to have it all about. And you have to start working and marching and so on. Because if you believe that things are not going fast enough, then you have to expedite it. And this is no political talk, you know. This is no political talk because whatever they do, whatever they say, when time comes to vote, I know how the vote is to me, but about that. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't come here for vote. That is a matter of side. That is settled. July 29th, June 29th, August 29th, the matter of voting is settled. That's not the issue. I came here to join the president to redress a problem. A problem. I was there in the fact with them. What the president saw, I also saw. I saw that. And what he said about large tracts of land being given out to people and so on, it's a fact. All the nice county buildings and so on, given to your friends and so on, it's a fact. My friends, people that carry the land who never even see carry the It's a fact. And while all this is happening, they sit down very quietly and so on. The time for action is now. And I will say no more for the time being.